That's how I like it. The Radio Waymo Breakfast. Issues of the day under T Radar. <laughs> good day, T Radar. Good morning. Pretty heavy tune for this time of the morning. Oh, the, the old the old mint chicks. The old mint chicks. Oh. Always good, I think, to have some a bit of heavy riffing quite early in the yeah. day. Fix the tone. Sometimes you need a good, you know. I was holding up my fist like that, but that, that's not that wasn't exactly the thing I was trying to get across. No. About, no. Well, were you pumping the air? Yeah, that's it. I, I was, a good fist pump was what I was yeah. looking for. Well, that certainly provided it. <laughs> Marvellous. Yeah. So, um, look, last night, T-Ray Dunn, just yeah. before we get on to the, some of the other issues, um, I don't know if you saw the story in the Herald yesterday about democracy in Auckland under attack. Yes, 75% of... Some decisions or something being made by appointees by the government with no democratic input. Yeah, um, including you know decisions on public transport, what's going to happen on the waterfront, you know, roading, all these things. All those important, trivial little things. Yeah. That normally the public has a say about, you know, okay, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing, and, and you know, there's consultation, and because that's democracy, that's what happens. Yeah, but time consuming. Time consuming, but it's, it's democracy, and you can't you can't have business people making all these decisions, oh, right? The problem with democracy is we all want all these different things and you know you just want someone to make a decision get stuck in regardless yeah. whose side like, are you on here Tim? Right it's, like, it's like when your parents when your parents say what do you want to do and you have all of these things and you go oh we want to go to the zoo or we want to go to motet and they go nope you're going to stay home and mow the lawns and you go oh well that seems fair enough the yes get mowed yes but at the same time t-radar the cornerstone of democracy i'm not saying saying your home life should be a democracy i'm just saying that the, when the when the city is being run right should be democracy and and this needs to be discussed in the media Okay. Yes. So, so that's what we're kind of doing right now, without really going too deep into the issues, right? Yes. Because uh, we can leave that up to you know really good interviewers yeah. to do sometimes. A really good, you know, some, some perhaps in the mainstream, perhaps, right? Perhaps like on a, 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 a popular, you know, television current show, show. Like for example, Campbell Live, seven yes. p.m. Right. And so um, I was watching the three news. I, I don't often like watching the six o'clock news because most of it's pap. But anyway. Oh, there I was watching, and then there was a promo for Campbell Live. And there's John Campbell saying, democracy under attack, or something, something along those lines. And he's going to have Rodney Hyde on the show, and they're going to discuss some of these issues. He's going to put the hard-hitting questions to Rodney Hyde. Which is only appropriate for a current affairs show that's uh, the most popular one in the Auckland demographic. That's that right. people tuning in to watch and see how democracy is being vandalised. So that's why I thought, oh, well, okay, I'll put up with the sports news and all the rubbish involved with that. Crikey. And I, I lasted that. Then I put up with um, Tony doing the weather and all the centres that I didn't want to see. It's like, it's, we're so, it's fetishistic, the weather, isn't it? <laughs> You've got, you got to sit through it. And so we got to 7 o'clock and I thought, right, we're going to have this hard-hitting interview with Rodney Hyde. What happened? There was no hard-hitting interview with Rodney Hyde. They crossed to the Oscars. What? They went to the Oscars. Old Kate Roger was some, you know, award winner. Well, that was the lead story. That, that was the second uh, second story. The first story was something about the Phoenix soccer game. Well, where was Rodney? Well, he certainly wasn't in between the, the woman who wanted some band to come to New Zealand and the giraffe down at the zoo. Bloody hell. He was so nowhere was to be all? seen. No. Bumped. Bumped for the giraffe or the Oscars Bumped or the... for the giraffe. What do you think? Someone had to put the hard word on them. They said, you can't be doing hard-hitting interviews at 7pm. You can't be Muckled discussing out. democracy at the foundations God. of our society in New Zealand. Because it's one of those things. And, you know, most of us, I don't suppose you put a submission in to the, you know, the ideas about the restructuring of the council, did you? No, I just, I just no. shake my fist. No, no, I know. <laughs> impotent rage. We sit in our houses and we impotently rage because yeah. the thought of putting in a submission is too complicated. And you always say, well, intelligent, right-thinking people will make a submission on these kind of things. And, and the concept of having 75% of all the major decisions made by an unelected board of government appointees to supposedly get things more business-like and, and heading won't possibly happen because who would allow that? Well, I just leave it up to smarter people than myself, like Hamish Keith or someone like that. To, all of those to, to put it. But, but I, I did think, you know, like I was, I thought, well, he promoted it. I thought, oh, great, John, you're going to return to what to what your show was meant to be in the first place, you know, the, the discussing some of the really important issues. But well, no, we, we went to the freaking... Oh, come on, the freaking Oscars. Come on, I entertainment. Know. Sport, the phoenix, a freaking giraffe. Hollywood nonsense. What was wrong with the giraffe? Oh, it, it, it got born. What? It got birthed or something at the zoo. Oh, for it God came God. out. Well, everyone loves an animal story, and I tell you what, there's nothing cuter than an animal story about a baby animal.
They were, oh, that would have been a ratings winner. And, you, you know, something positive. Yeah. You don't want people sitting at home yeah. going, oh, God, Auckland's absolutely yeah. okay. rotted. We don't need that. That's depressing. Yeah. It's only March. Point made, T-Radar. Outrageous. Outrageous. There's plenty of outrage going on. Uh, Faye, we'll, we'll go through them quickly because some of them are... Uh, uh, just, sometimes you just think, what on earth is going on? Call for tobacco to be dealt with the same way as methamphetamine. By which I assume they mean uh, make it illegal, put it into the hands of the gangs, they'll make enormous <laughs> profits, social unrest will Perfect. happen. <laughs> yeah. So, because uh, there's a big select committee inquiry going on uh, at the moment on the, the banning of tobacco, making it a pharmacy only drug. Because they're saying, you know, what, what better way? And they said, there's a survey, they said 80% of smokers want to stop, so we can help them doing that by making it illegal. Thus, meaning the only way they can get it is through a pharmacy or some kind of gang. Like a tobacco dispensary. Like a tobacco dispensary. So yes. You, you're about to, you choose, choose your blend. What you need, it's just like, because you know in California, they have the marijuana dispensaries. They do. Yes, and over in, um, I've been to places, uh, over there, mushroom dispensaries. Do they? <laughs> In, How do they um, justify that? Uh, what? How do they justify mushroom dispensaries? Well, because people is it... need to get mushrooms, and you want to know what kind of mushrooms they are and what <laughs> but effect they have on you. At least in California, it's under the guise of being medicinal. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an all-natural product. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? That was in Scandinavia somewhere. Did yeah. you try any? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere where they do that kind of thing, where it's all sort of, you know, oh, okay, you can yagen. Yes, so that's all going on. Uh, my favourite story of the week probably was that uh, the home base, more risky for troops than being overseas currently. More likely to be injured uh, here in New Zealand than you are on active service overseas. Well, well currently, because we have heard the odd story about a tank overturning in, in uh, um, the you know, central North Island there somewhere. Perhaps slightly more dramatic than the mass of the injuries, sporting injuries. Mm. It, you know, lots of hard-hitting sort of uh, sports games and things like that. Oh, of course. Yes. So, uh, or doing, doing, during training. They do say an idle soldier is a dangerous soldier. Yes, the, you know? yes they do. They, 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 I remember at the end of, um, uh, this is giving away uh, a Band of Brothers, uh, the last, last program with Band of Brothers, but everyone should have seen it by now because it's 10 years old. Yes. It's not new season TV1, it's not new season, it's no. 10 years old. But anyway, um, yeah, the, 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 because right at the end of the war there, all these troops, you know, they've, they've been fighting all this time, but half of them killed themselves after the war because they, did, they had too much free time on their hands to do crazy stuff, like driving around and playing with guns. Yeah. Well, it affects you, that kind of thing. And, you know, I guess if you go back from that sort of situation to your ordinary boring job in a factory with, a, you know, yep. screaming kids and a wife who's complaining about stuff, you think, oh, this isn't what I fought for. Nothing compares to real war. Nothing compares to it, no. Well, um, Nothing compares to ghosts in a bottle. Nothing at 5,000 bucks? <laughs> Look, if I had a spare 5,000 bucks around, I wouldn't think to myself, you know what I'm, you know what I need? Ghosts in a bottle. Yeah. But nonetheless, someone has, uh, and they've bought them off Trade Me. Someone from Christchurch, apparently, has bought the two captured ghosts. Now, it, were, they cap- were they captured in Ghostbusters style? I don't know. But I like the fact that the woman called in an exorcist after bizarre activity at her new Brighton home. I mean, if there's any bizarre activity at my house, I don't often think, you know what, I need an exorcist. Yeah. And if I did, where would I find one? Are they in the yellow pages? What I want to know is that if you, if you put the glass bottle up to your ear, would it be going... I don't know. No idea. But look, if someone feels as if they need a ghost and they've missed out, there's another one um, kept in a large soft drink container that's available. Last night, oh, okay. it was uh, only at $2.50. Huh. So, bargain. You know, bargain. Well, what, what would you, you do? Did buy it? And it did turn out that there actually was a ghost <laughs> yeah. in it. And you'd thought, oh, this will be hilarious. Or what if you bought a ghost? What, 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 what he's going to do with it? Is he going to go to like someone's house that he doesn't like and release them? Yeah, you'd, while they were sleeping, you put it next to their nostrils and they breathe it in. Oh. And then they become possessed. Crikey. And is there a law against that? Well, there should be. But what would, they, what would you be charged with? Well, um... Some form of assault. Intended posi- uh, possession? Int- <laughs> In possession, of a, possession of a spirit. <laughs> of the non-alcohol variety. Should, it should be up there with meth and tobacco. It should be up there with meth, meth and tobacco and jandals as well. <laughs> jandals, they're, they're as dangerous as meth and tobacco, uh, particularly, you know, for your, your back, your hips, your ankles, your neck. Uh, chiropractors have come out and said, look out, jandals is dangerous as high yeah. heels. Yeah. 
We're not supposed to be walking in them, apparently. It compromises our stride. No surprises. Have you have you stood for a long time in jandals in one spot? Oh, yeah, the way you've got to hold them on with your toe. Yeah. Like a monkey. Yeah. Like you've got some kind of extra sort of working limb, fingering thing down there on your foot. Well, maybe we'll adapt. We'll evolve over time. Maybe they need generations. To I was going to say, maybe they need to be strapped on better, but then they become a sandal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we don't... <laughs> well, you don't want that. Especially a Roman sandal. Not a Roman. <laughs> How embarrassing. The only reason for a Roman sandal is if you're off to maraud. <laughs> yes, in, exactly. in which case they're, you know, not too bad. Yeah, take your spear with you. Exactly, easy. t Radar, thanks so much. We'll speak again next week. We Hopefully will. democracy will be restored yeah. and current affairs will be as it should be. Thanks, t Radar. All right. See ya. Get a